Thank you very much, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members of this Committee. Uh, I'm very happy to be here in front of you. Uh, I've have, I understand you're going to give me a tough time, a tough hours, but I must admit that even though I'm nervous, I have been looking forward to this, because this is a core part of democracy. And you are the directly elected representatives of the European citizens. And you are the ones that have to uh, do the hearing and to um, say whether I could continue to take office or not. So this I really look forward to. And I also look forward to, hopefully, to work together with you in the coming five years. My background is that I've been minister in five different uh, governments in Sweden under three different prime ministers, all minority governments. I'm very familiar with working close to different political groups and to find uh, compromises and ways forward with parliament. And I understand that these are uh, uh, experience that I'm also gonna need uh, to go together with you. In 2015, Sweden, received more refugees than any other member states, according to per capita. In 2015, one third of all unaccompanied minors that came to Europe came to Sweden. It was a real challenge. The Prime Minister appointed me to, with a special responsibility to coordinate all government actions related to the management of migration and integration in Sweden at that time. I am proud that Sweden could give shelter to so many refugees during this time. And I'm also proud that many of them now are integrated in society and contribute to economy. But at the same time, this made it very, very clear to me that we are, we are lacking a well-functioning and manageable European system for migration and asylum. We need, we really need a common and sustainable European solutions to migration. We need solutions that are predictable both for individuals and for society. Migration and security policies are important and can be mutually reinforcing, but I would like to be very clear from the beginning. They are separate. Migration should not be seen as a threat to security. Security is linked to freedom. Everybody in Europe should have the freedom to live in a society under the rule of law, in the knowledge that public authorities are doing everything in their power to protect them and to combat those who jeopardize that freedom. Threats to, to uh, secu security are also threats towards our societies. But I must also say, I will be alert to ensure that the very freedoms we are seeking to protect are not being jeopardized by the security measures taken to do so. On migration, my mission is to find a new way forward, one which works and which is true to our, our values. My top priority, and that's going to be difficult, I understand that, is to develop uh, the new pact on migration and asylum. It's going to be difficult, but I must make also clear, failure is not an option in this case. We must have a common European pact on migration and asylum. We have come a long way, but complex and diverse challenges remain. I do think we now have a positive momentum to tackle them with the European approach, building bridges and not walls between member states. Migration and security feature highly in the political guidelines because we must give citizens a response to the issues they, are, they care most about. And both migration and security are on top three of our European citizens. Migration and security touch upon many policies inside and outside the EU. Coherence and coordination are key. 
effectively and predictably managing migration, protecting external borders, and ensuring security will remain the paramount ta task for the Home Affairs portfolio. For this, we must find common ground. Compromise and collaboration are the cornerstones of the European way of working together. And this is how I intend to proceed. I know that you, as members of European Parliament and members of this important committee, are very skilled and experienced with this way of working. The European Union is based on values, and these must be our guiding principles. I will not only defend and speak up loudly for these values inside the European Union, but also to the rest of the world. For me, it's crucial to protect our democracies against populism and extremism, and to always speak up for human rights. I'm particularly motivated to tackle the tough challenges of the Home Affairs portfolio. There is no portfolio I would rather have. This is the one I wanted. I'm grateful for the confidence that the president-elect has shown by entrusting me with this important responsibility. The threats we face today on security are constantly evolving, and we need to adapt. I will focus on filling the gaps in our approach to EU internal security and to ensure that the union is equal to the task. My aim is to build an effective security union based on the foundations developed in the last five years. This means ensuring that the laws in place are effective, effectively implemented. It means closing remaining gaps in our security framework, organized crime, drugs, human trafficking, child sex abuse and exploitation are all major priorities for me. Too often, the most vulnerable members of our society are the victims of those crimes. I firmly believe that society has to protect them, and I will be their strongest advocate. I will work tirelessly to close down the space for terrorists to plan, finance, and carry out their attacks. Fighting all forms of radicalization is also on top of my agenda. I would like to praise the report of the Terror Commission Committee, it recommend, its recommendations will guide me in my work. Key to having an impact is better law enforcement cooperation, all the more so with the quick development of new security threats. We need to foster this cooperation with Europol playing a vital role in this aspect. I'm committed to a solid and evidence-based approach to policy making in the areas covered by my portfolio. My aim is to apply principles, the principles of better regulations to the preparation of future proposals in my portfolio. As regards migra migration, as you all are well aware, these discussions have been difficult and divisive. There is an urgent need for common, manageable, sustainable and predictable solutions. There is a new momentum now with the arrival of a new commission, and I have a very clear mission from the president-elect to propose a new pact on migration and asylum. My approach will be to first listen carefully to different views to, find to, to help us find common ground. With this parliament, of course, but also bilaterally with all the member states. As soon as I'm in office, if confirmed by you, I intend to swiftly meet all member states bilaterally, and I will keep this committee closely informed. I will be looking at a full range of migration policies, asylum, fighting irregular migration, strengthening external borders, return, legal pathways, integration, and cooperation with partners outside the EU. Part of this holistic approach will be to look carefully at existing proposals on the table, and it's important for me to have a gender perspective in all actions that we take. I'm fully aware that this committee has worked very hard in a true European way to define an initial position on many of the asylum instruments. This was vital work on which we need to build. 
Finding sustainable solutions based on solidarity and responsibility must be a key guide for our work. I want to look at ways to close the loopholes between asylum and return. While we must honor our values and legal responsibilities for, to those in need of international protection, we also have to ensure that those not eligible, eligible to stay are returned. Last year, only one third of those ordered to leave were actually returned. I think that a credible and sustainable asylum system needs a functioning and humane return policy, fully respecting the non refoulement principle of international law. The political guidelines also stress the need for legal and safe pathways to the European Union. And this, I b truly believe, is part of the solution. We should be proud that Europe's share of global resettlement was almost 50% last year. But more needs to be done in this area. I will work with member states to step up resettlement and to look at developing humanitarian corridors for urgent needs. We cannot tolerate that lives are put at risk in the Mediterranean and also being lost. A crucial element of the new Pact on Migration and Asylum will be a more sustainable, reliable and permanent approach to search and rescue. I have a clear mission to replace ad hoc solutions. Saving lives at sea is our moral duty. This is linked to stepping up the fight against smugglers and traffickers. We need to do more to break up the cruel business model of smugglers and the criminal networks behind. Finally, I would like to underline the risk faced today to one of the key achievements of European integration, the Schengen area. The swift return to a fully functioning Schengen area without internal border controls will be a key objective for me. The more successful our new pact on migration and asylum, the stronger our external borders through the National Border Coast Guard, assisted by Frontex, and the more effective our work against smuggling, the more trust there will be in the Schengen area. And this, hopefully, will also pave the way for further enlargement of Schengen. My goal is a migration and security policy that works for our citizens, that is balanced and fair, and above all, grounded in our values. I'm fully aware that this is a difficult portfolio. This is what people have been telling me uh, these three weeks since um, I was presented as the candidate that the commissioner designate. But we, we must come forward in this area. There is no way we can't do it. So this will be my prior, top priority and I will need your help, your expertise and your experience uh, in this area to come forward. So it's a great honor if I'm approved to take um, office on these responsibilities and I look forward to do the work together with you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner-designate.